Hi, this is a video about my printing and how I do my printing in my darkroom. And I want to share that with you. People are anxious to know John Free's secret for making prints. And so I'd be glad to show you. Welcome to Johnny's dark room. This is where the boy has all his fun. I'm in here probably now eight to 16 hours a day. I get here about 7.15 in the morning, turn on the heater, and I start working. I've got everything here, my whole career. I want to share it with you. People have been asking me about how I make the prints and how difficult it is, how easy it is, and how much fun it is. So I want to tell you, this is an awful lot of fun. Not only fun, but you're producing something important in your life. You're bringing something out of you that is good and you're putting it on paper and you're sharing it with other people. It's a wonderful process. So come on in and I'm going to show you how I do it. Everything is pretty simple. I've been in this one dark room for 40 years. I've got a lot of work here, a lot of test prints, work prints, finished prints. We've got a project we're working on with abstract automobiles project. We're getting that together. I'm doing a lot of silver based uh, 11 by 14 prints. This is what I do here. These are archivally produced. I have an average and larger. This is the Bessler 23C. Very adequate. And right now, I'm doing some pictures of my friend Robert Frank. Uh, I photographed Robert Frank about 25 years ago. And now I'm getting a lot of requests from people who are collectors and some people in galleries who are inquiring about releasing a certain amount of my prints on Robert because I have a very rare print that I made of Robert, or a photograph that I made of Robert, of him smiling. And there's, there's hardly any other photographs of Robert Frank smiling. We've got the negative. We're looking at the negative of Robert through the light. Now we're going to take it down and we're going to put it in the negative carrier. That's the that's the device that holds the negative steady in the enlarger. Here, I'm doing that now. Put it in carefully. Adjust it slightly like this. See, get it all even. Make sure everything is kosher. Nice. Pull this off. Dust it off a little bit. Insert it into the enlarger. Turn the enlarger on. You want to turn out the lights? Here we go. And there's Robert. Now we adjust the we adjust the easel so I can get my black borders just right. Now we take up the green magnifier. This is a wonderful um, focusing aid. You just put this down and look through here, and you turn your focusing knob until you can see bright green like sand on a beach. Then you know it's in focus. And there's Robert. To share a little bit about the story about me photographing Robert. There's magic in photography and I've seen it many, many, many times. But in this instance, I had no idea I was going to photograph Robert Frank that day. But I did. And then I made this proof sheet of the negative strip. The six negative strip. And I, I was amazed because right after the picture of Robert, I photographed a very spectacular, dramatic sky with the dark thunder clouds and then the light coming through the clouds. And to me, it was like heaven. I know Robert, my friend Robert, just passed recently. He died. And, 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 and then I looked at this and, and I, I, it was hard for me. He hugged me. I made this photograph. And then how do these images come on? I'm not an Ansel Adams kind of photographer. I don't usually photograph scenics. <laughs> or skies. But there's three shots. I guess I bracketed my exposures. I, I was really taken with these for some reason. But isn't it ironic that that picture of heaven right after, you see how it's darker here? That means less light will go through the negative, And so his head will be whiter up in that area because he's bald and the light might be hitting it. We don't want that because that would serve as a distraction maybe. So I would use that cutout card and in the printing process, after the initial uh, printing time is given, I would give additional, see what I mean? I make that little 
I just give a little around that area where I need it on his forehead. Maybe maybe one or two, two and a half seconds like this and just move it around like that. And that would give a little more density in here so that it's not as white and distracting. It's more, it looks better for him. And it's easier to look at the, at the photograph. And then down here, I want to print for this whiteness on his collar. And also for the stubble, his two-day beard on his chin here, which is a good indicator of what you're printing for. You want that to be close to pure white. So that's a good indicator. You're always looking for slightly pure white in the specular highlights or on the edge of his whiskers. And then you want dense black. You want complete black in some areas on his shirt here where you can see where the white, it, this, all this will be dark and all this will be white. See, it's a negative, it's opposite. So this is what we look for and we learn to be able to read this, this negative through the light we have, and realize what the print might need. And this is a very easy print to make. The only burning in, the only adjustment I have to do is what I said is right here. And the rest of it is a very simple print to make. I was lucky with the exposure. I was nervous, of course, when I made the photograph. And uh, at the magnitude of what I was facing, Robert Frank. All right, so we want to talk about, <clears throat> about my schedule of printing. What am I doing here? And the notes afterwards, so that the next time I print it, I'll know what's the, at least to start. Start. Because sometimes it takes you hours and hours and, and days and days in this case. But here are the notations I've made over the last three days while I've been working on this print. F8, 30 seconds. And then the number four and a half filter, which I dial in here, that's the contrast. Four and a half, that's pretty good contrast. This is a weak negative maybe in that area. Dial in the, the contrast. And then I have give it 30 seconds. And then here I, I have change the contrast, try three and a half. There was too much contrast here maybe. And so I made a note to try three and a half. Then down here, look, I'm back up to four. But then down here at F11, I'm up to 4.8. And so it, it you know, you're, you're it's very slowly trying to logically and rationally bring in this print. You know, the, the, the density's right, or the highlight's right, is the focusing on, the borders, everything. But this is the most fun you can have. You're in here, you're making something that's valuable. I want you to do this. I want you to see how clever you are when you pick up that camera and you start following my advice. You get into photography and you're going to surprise yourself with what you've got inside is good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> that was just an ironic story I wanted to tell you about Robert and his photograph. I'm in here working on it now. I want you to be a part of it.